reading from the Gospel of Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give and return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in their, this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father, with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praised and exalted above all exalted above all forever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. This morning, let us take a break from the worries of the world, from those human things, and set our mind on divine things. The language of our right one liturgy with the these and the thous will help us along this way. This morning, we are hearing and seeing worship from a little different angle. Familiar or new, this language has a way of transporting us to another time and place. And with a bit of imagination, we can see ourselves inside our own sanctuary, or maybe the church of our childhood, or in a grand cathedral like Westminster Abbey. This last year, putting our mind on divine things has not always been easy. The human thing, life itself, preserving it, protecting it, saving it, living it, has been placed front and center during this global pandemic. Human things are demanding and at times greedy. They grasp us, holding our attention. And it just isn't the good, the bad, and the ugly out in the world. It's that everyday stuff, that everyday stuff of life, the trivial and the critical. Meanwhile, those things that help us keep our mind on the divine, our church community, the sacraments of bread and wine, our common prayer life itself remains elusive. 
and yet, and yet like that mystery that they are, they are still with us, even when we feel they are just out of reach. To set our mind on the divine things is to dare to hope in this year of pandemic. Hope has led us to keep trying, to keep exploring new routines and new ways of connecting with each other and new ways of worship. Just last night, I streamed a live online music concert. The artist is a singer songwriter named Carrie Newcomer and she named her concert, Remembering Radiance, Acknowledging Grief, Claiming Love. And to my surprise, I found myself in a sacred space with strangers. In that moment, we were sharing our common grief of this time, a mutual love of music and of the sacred. To set our mind on divine things is to believe in resurrection. To believe that somehow God is redeeming the mess of human things. Small resurrection stories are happening all around us with eyes to see and ears to hear them as the gospel says. Let us take a minute to remember and recall some of those we have heard or may have experienced. And then considering sharing that good news with others. To set our minds on divine things is also to show forgiveness and grace to ourselves and to one another when things don't go as planned, when redemption is delayed, and when we think we've got this, and then we are hit with those human things, the concerns, the frustrations, the grief, and even the anger. When we ask, when can we travel? What about my child's birthday party? What about school? How am I going to care for my dying mother, brother, friend who I can't see? And cries of this isn't fair or right. We set our minds on divine things. It's not to ignore the human things. Human things matter. God and Jesus, the incarnate one, came into this world of human things. Setting our mind on divine things is about an orientation. It is about orienting ourselves towards what is divine, to what, towards Jesus, towards Jesus' way of love. It is about paying attention to our inner life, to prayer, to that divine way so that when we find ourselves knee deep in those human things, we have the possibility of seeing and hearing the wisdom, the grace, the hope of that divine way. Lent is a season. It is a season that calls us back to the divine things. Like Jesus calling Peter back as Peter keeps drifting off towards those human things and concerns as Mark tells it, Jesus in the tone of that almighty God reminds Peter that he is going astray, missing the mark, setting his mind, his interest on human things and not the divine things. And then to the whole crowd, those prone to drifting distractions and demons, Jesus invites everyone to follow him along that way of love, that way that will lead to Jerusalem. It's a costly way, but it's a way that leads to true life, a life that is priceless beyond profit or gain, beyond those priorities of ambition, status, and power, which often drive divine things, which often drive human things, not divine things. Setting our minds on divine things today can look like carrying a cross of justice and peace out in the world. And it can look like a quiet time in daily devotion. It can be about listening to music that inspires us, engaging in art that touches our souls, worshiping in new ways during COVID. Setting our minds on divine things can be helping a friend or a stranger. And now more than ever, it can be simply about resting 
about resting and being upheld by that firm foundation, that refuge, that omnipotent hand of God. We have learned anything from the gospel and in living in this time of pandemic, setting our mind on divine things is not bound up by our human ways or human understandings. No matter how much we cling to them or defend these old and familiar ways, setting our minds on divine things during this Lenten season, we could learn a lesson from an ancient practice of St. Ignatius, what he called in Latin, a Gary Contra, or acting against. When we are being pulled by those human things, social media, cable news, Netflix binges, and that extra glass of wine, in my case, try acting against it, Ignatius would say. If we are quick to judge, criticize another, if someone is getting under our skin, instead of bristling or raging like we tend to do, act against those usual tendencies. In acting against, we notice. And in noticing, we may, be, may better understand the other and our own tendencies. It doesn't mean giving up our beliefs or ideas. Acting against those human tendencies have an ultimate, it's a way to act against them. We don't let them have power over us. And when we don't let them have power over us, they don't have power over our relationships with one another. In acting against those human tendencies, we are opening ourselves to be more free, genuine in relationship with one another and with God. And sometimes acting against can simply mean taking another route going another direction, looking at things from a different angle. When we do this like we have had to do during this pandemic. Those things that are of, are of God can be seen with new and fresh eyes. And here's the big one for Ignatius in this acting against. When we find ourselves drifting from God, when our spiritual life and practices are in a place that he called desolation, darkness, emptiness, lack of faith. Instead of leaning into that place in that overused modern term, let's go against it with this ancient practice, acting against it and pray more. For the Ignatius tradition, that could be setting down for a full hour of prayer, not just five minutes. Setting our minds on divine things is a day-to-day -day discipline. Praying to God each day to help us along the way. It is a way that binds and bears a cost, and it also is a way that frees and leads to a true life. This way is about a way of love, that compassion that is Christ. Compassion is the plumb line the way by which all things human and divine are measured. And it is in this way of compassion and this way of love, when we act against this, this is what I think triggered that almighty God, voice of God out of Jesus when he rebuked Peter. That is also the same voice that forgave Peter again and again. And for that, let us say amen.